guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell, based on the title, today we are talking about Celine Spring Summer 2011. And if you haven't checked out my other videos where we're reviewing old Celine era collections, I will link them in the description box below. As we are waiting for Phoebe Philo's new collection, why not do another one of these videos? By the time this collection debuted on the runway, it's safe to say Phoebe Philo's effect was pretty much felt everywhere. As predicted, Phoebe Philo had really turned this brand that honestly a lot of people just kind of forgot about to one of the hottest, most coveted brands of the early 2010s. It was really impossible to not feel her presence, but this also posed a bit of a problem. So this from Vogue. Phoebe Philo's influence extends from the highest echelons of style. Is there an editor in the front row who hasn't bought Celine's structured two-handle tote? All the way to the high street. At the fast fashion stores in New York and London, her brand of minimalism rules. Still, if what she did on her runway today wasn't an intentional rebuff of her copy artists, she's just made their jobs a whole lot more difficult. How? By embracing the artisanal. So in today's video, we are gonna talk about this concept of the artisanal and how it sort of contrasts, but also connects with her very austere aesthetic. We'll kind of take a look at these two contrasting ideas, the artisanal and the austere, and how they are almost harmonized in a way to level up this new vision of minimalism, her vision of fashion at the time. And I think there's this perception that minimalism is Steve Jobs, jeans, t-shirt, which it can be, right? But if you watch my last video, Celine Fall Winter 2010, you'll see that what were very seemingly simple looks were actually quite complex, strange, and even sexy. It doesn't make sense when I say it, but when you see it, the clothing speaks for itself. So let's start off by talking about the austere, and then we'll talk about the artisanal, and we'll kind of look at how it's sort of brought together and creates kind of this interesting, almost like sporty vibe. Phoebe Philo is quoted as saying this, the austerity is really important to me. I really like that there is a kind of shield. There is a protection, a confidence that you don't have to show too much to get what you want and that is very much the kind of woman I'm trying to work. So what we're seeing here a lot of all white on white, very clinical, clean, but it's also very calm, cool, and collected. We're seeing square necklines, almost angular sharp cuts, and we're seeing these black outlines. It really creates this sense of sharpness. It reminds me of Jill Sander or even kind of the graphic hard edges that we saw when Ralph Simmons was at Jill Sander. But there's also boldness in the color, which also kind of reminded me of that period as well. We're seeing jackets with these interesting cape sleeves. There's something very conference room chic about this. When it comes to the handbags, that austere look we're definitely seeing here. Here we have the blade bag, very sharp looking. This is like one of the earlier iterations, but it's very quintessential Celine. Simple, sophisticated, minimalist, wear to work functions as a clutch. It's something that you can wear day to night. Obviously it's been discontinued, but if you definitely want to try to find it on the pre-love market, depending on where you look, you could probably find it for a good price. There's just such a treasure trove of old Celine era handbags that are just beyond the luggage and the classic and the belt bag. There's so many interesting bags. So now let's talk about the artisanal. This from the New York Times article, A 21st Century Woman. So this is from Susie Menkes and she wrote about this collection and she stated this, rather than rely solely on updating the Helmut Lang, Jill Sander heritage of the 1990s for the 21st century, Miss Philo introduced another element, hand weaving. It softened the lean lines of her tunic and pant silhouette, added texture and fringe surface decoration to the more familiar ivory silk and brown leather without ever descending into the folksy. And this artisanal approach feels elevated and sophisticated because it's not really centered around a core theme. It's almost like a very evolved Celine version of some of the work that she did at Chloe. And sometimes texture can make something look very heavy and bulky, but it doesn't feel that way at all with this collection. We're seeing how how texture really creates like a very beautiful fluid movement with the clothing. And I think Phoebe Philo would explore this in other collections. You feel that sense of freedom and getting away with the movement in these pieces. There was that sort of boho aesthetic that was very popular even at a brand like Chloe, that sort of sense of wanderlust. This isn't really that 20 something girl going to Coachella or on vacation. It's not that kind of vibe. It's more so, is this woman going to like a wellness retreat? There's something that feels very calming about this 
approach. The texture and the movement really creates this beautiful sense of depth. With the materials, a lot of these pieces look like they're potential pieces you could find like a vacation tourist shop, but they're a little bit more abstract, asymmetrical, kind of taking a page from helmet laying a little bit here, rawness around the edges, yet there's also this crispness as well. And we're also seeing the theme of furry shoes continued. And finally, I wanna talk about how this artisanal and the austere is also blended in, I wanna say with a slightly more sporty aesthetic. So we do see a little bit more of a relaxed approach in this collection, subtle hints of maybe something a little bit sportier. It's sort of combined with her very signature minimal aesthetic. The garments have very clean, relaxed silhouettes. There's a sense of ease, drawing from functionality and comfort from athletic attire. This collar really reminds me of like a bomber jacket. Some of these pieces look like modern day sportswear, very relaxed. What's also interesting is these hip slung, like low crotch waist, these very airy but knife sharp pleats. They look very architectural. This is something that we're seeing at brands like The Row today. In the colors, I think the colors are so interesting in this. Last collection, we saw her go very into like the cooler, darker neutrals. Now we're going for something a little bit softer, more subdued. We're still seeing navies, we're seeing subdued whites, but we're also seeing in a very pleasant way, colorful accents. We're seeing these strips of color. They kind of remind me of artist Ellsworth Kelly paintings. If you look at some of her later collections, I feel like she takes really big inspiration from this artist. And then of course, I have to talk about the infamous Kanye West shirt. This was that silk shirt with that geometric mosaic pattern. It's like this scarf print. It's this beautiful royal blue forest green kind of color. Here we have Kanye West very appropriately closing Coachella 2011. Seeing him wear this, it also to me speaks to the unisex appeal of this collection. The last couple collections we saw a lot of workwear. These are clothes that men and women could easily wear. And while her previous collections, I wouldn't call them bodycon dresses, although that was like a dominating sort of silhouette we saw in the 2000s, even into the 2010s. While she never went that skin tight with her earlier collections. There was still something about conforming to the shape of the body to make things very figure flattering. Whereas I think this collection, there's a little bit of a rejection of that. It speaks to the fact that we have Kanye West and recently Travis Scott wore this shirt. But then we also have Jessica Simpson who wore this shirt as well. It just speaks to a spectrum of different people that can wear these clothes. And I think just talking about Kanye West here, and I know he's totally a different uh, person now. In 2011, I thought it was very interesting how he attended the CFDA Fashion Awards with her. And in the song, Dark Fantasy, off of my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, he actually has like a line about Phoebe Philo and he states this, am I chicken that new Phoebe Philo? At this time, promoting a lot of these women's wear brands, typically we saw supermodels or actresses, female musicians, etc. But I think this is very interesting to see a rap musician as one of Phoebe Philo's fans. And he would also attend her other collections as well. So in conclusion, I think this collection both shows the artisanal and the austere. I remember how we talked about in the first collection how Phoebe Philo had sort of this like soft but toughness. Two unlike ideas fused to create something very interesting but also very minimal at the same time. With her previous two collections it seemed like she was very excited. This concept of the modern working woman getting back to work, creating strong powerful reduced wardrobe. There was sort of that theme but I almost feel like she's kind of relaxing a little bit in this collection and I think it's really nice to see. With every collection we kind of get the sense of this is how Phoebe Philo was feeling. Maybe is this clothing for women going on vacation, but not so much in that jet setting way, you know, kind of like the Michael Kors vision of Celine. And it's not that boho vision either. When I look at this clothing, I'm like, yes, it could be almost like vacation wear. It could be clothing that you could wear to something more relaxing. To me, when I see this though, I feel this is clothing for a working mom that needs to take some time off and do something for herself. And maybe she's going on a wellness retreat. Maybe she's gonna do something really crafty and artisanal, who knows? And the reason why I say that is I feel there's there's just something very empathetic about these silhouettes. They're not as like tight, conforming to the body. There's something just more aware that a woman wants to relax and chill out, but it's not a gray sporty tracksuit. It's something that is very chic. And that kind of theme of precision sportswear. When I look at this collection, I feel this is actually more in line with how Phoebe Philo personally dresses. Her personal style It's a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit more casual, but it's not messy. It's very tranquil. So yes, that is my video and I would love to know, was there anything that really stood out to you about this collection? Anything that you would honestly wear today, even though it's like 12 years later? Would love to know. Thank you so much for joining me in another one and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.